demonstrate it by identifying and targeting those that we know are responsible for terrible violence and abuses that the activists have faced. The least we should do is to make sure that those who have murdered Nigerians and deprived or travel to the UK. In my view, that should include the leaders of the government and the military who are now, even now, refusing to allow transparent and fair investigations to happen and for justice to be implemented. What I want to hear from the Minister today is that a list of Majinsky, I never say that word properly, <laughs> sanctions is being created and action against those on that list taken in weeks and not years. Our role in this must be, I think, to work with all that we can to identify those responsible and ensure justice is done. And I would be so very grateful if on this occasion the government acts decisively. I will also. Thank you, Mr Gray, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and to follow the Honourable Member for West Ham who spoke so passionately for justice for Nigerians. It is also, I would also like to thank the Member for Chipping Barnett for securing this very important debate. Now, this, of course, was a popular debate, and it's unfortunate that my Honourable Friend, the Member for Vauxhall, was not called to speak in this debate, and she sends her solidarity with the NSARS movement. Now, I must begin by addressing the horrific violence we've seen inflicted upon young Nigerian civilians who were peacefully expressing their fundamental human rights against police brutality. As seen on media platforms, armed military officers discharged live ammunition at these peaceful protesters, injuring and killing them. It is, however, unfortunate that as of today, both federal and state government in Nigeria have issued conflicting statements on the event that occurred at Baleki Tollgate. This has left us with a series of yet still unanswered questions. Who exactly ordered the military to shoot live ammunition in a civilian territory? Why were bank accounts of some individuals who partook in the protest frozen? Mr Chairman, if a democratic country deprived its people of their aspiration, livelihoods and voices, strips its people from their loved ones, forces them into hiding, and instills fear of retribution through violence attack on free speech, then that country can only be a dictatorship disguised as a democracy. Is Nigeria a dictatorship? Now, having now asked this question, I leave the Nigerian public to decide that for themselves. I must now address the question of sanctions, which is what we are here to discuss. If we can ensure that these sanctions will not negatively impact civilians, whether directly or indirectly, then I do support a travel ban and asset seizures sanctions on individual officials found responsible. Now, while discussing sanctions is crucial to determining how we as a nation will respond to the violence recently accumulating in the NSARS movement, it can only be the tip of the iceberg. And we must use our platforms to hold the Nigerian government accountable through more than just sanctions. We must do the right thing by the people in Nigeria protesting for their own human rights and ask the questions they've given us the platform to ask, which is what role did the Nigerian government as a whole play in these attacks? Will there be an independent investigation into the over 100 cases of torture, rape, extrajudiciary execution throughout the NSARS protests? The reason the world knows about the violent attacks on Nigerian protesters is because civilians on the Lekki Tollgate massacre bravely risked their own lives to post these videos on social media. Only a few Nigerian news outlets even reported these stories, and they were all subsequently fined before the Nigerian government denied the attack's existence and began silencing reporters. Agencies and individuals have since blamed one another. No one seems to be taking the responsibility. Nigerian civilians risk everything to give themselves a voice and that, that they use to expose the atrocities inflicted upon them. And today, 4,000 miles away, the Nigerian government is strangling that voice with a proposed social media censorship bill. We must demand transparency of what is happening to civilians and amplify that news using our platform. 
we must continue to seek clarity on what happened on October the 20th when power was cut from the Lekki toll gate and SARS police forces began spraying protesters gathering there with bullets. Now I'm sure that many of us have seen the footage of peaceful protesters linked armed in arms singing the Nigerian anthem as they were indiscriminately gunned down. Indiscriminately gunned down. Now, now is the time to hold officials to account for their crimes against humanity that, that they have embarked on. So I call for an impartial human investigation into these human rights violence and, and to begin the process to secure justice for victims and their family. As we try to make sense of the incidents, we must ask uncomfortable questions of ourselves. I'm referring to the fact that British officials trained SARS police squad from 2016 up until this year, 2020, and they also trained the, British, the Nigerian army. Now we have to ask, what did this training actually entail? Could it have prevented escalation of this kind? Now, standing here as a, as a proud British Nigerian, I implore the Minister and colleagues across the House to pursue answers to these questions and do what it can to facilitate Nigerians' fight for freedom. Thank you.